The Ottawa Senators' Luke McCaw scored 35 seconds into overtime to beat the Hawkesbury Hawks 3-2 in overtime. After the loss made the series score 3-2 in the best of seven series, Hawkesbury faces elimination next time out. Ottawa was paced by McCaw, who registered one goal and one assist. The Senators' penalty kill was spotless, allowing no goals on five Hawkesbury power plays. Ottawa also got points from Mitchell Gibson, who also had one goal and one assist to lead the team in points. Zachary Carr also scored for Ottawa. More assists for Ottawa came from Jody Sullivan, who had two, and Alexander Way and Evan Lindquist, who contributed one each. The Hawks were helped by Julian Denicourt, who t- tallied one goal. Denicourt scored 9.30 into the second period to make the score 1-1. Reed Murphy assisted in the tally. Ian Andriano made 23 saves for Ottawa on 25 shots. The Senators incurred 20 minutes in penalty time with five minors. Hawksbury's Andrew Tucci stopped 26 out of 29 that he faced. The Hawks incurred 10 minutes in penalty time with five minors. Here with Ottawa assistant coach Jamie Mayo after a game five overtime win over the Hawksbury Hawks for the junior senators. And uh, Jamie, it was another overtime winner for Luke McCaw. Uh, he's got two in the playoffs. What's been the big secret for him, do you think? Well, obviously, you're, you're, you're best, you want your best players to be on the ice in key situations. And, and Luke's so, shown a tendency since he arrived here from Nepean to score some big goals for us. And fortunately, the puck found his way onto his stick uh, in overtime and he made no mistake get way to Tucci and you know put it in the back of the net and uh, but he uh, he's been real a tremendous hockey player for us since he's been here and you know obviously scored some huge goals for us in the playoffs the home record for your team in the playoffs is uh, well it couldn't be better just to put it bluntly and what's been the key for you guys at home is there anything that you do differently at the Jim Durrell complex that uh, seems to put you guys over the top no I think we I think we play really well defensively and I think uh, we take a little bit of pride in playing a good defensive game and limiting the opponent's uh, chances especially high uh, high end chances and limiting their odd man rushes and you know the key to us is we always want to say if we score three goals, we're, we have stand a good chance to win the game. And you know if we give up two or less, like we do, like we've been doing in the playoffs so far, we're we're gonna have a good chance to win a hockey game. So it's more attention to detail in the defensive zone, and and playing away from the puck are really important for us here here at our home rink. What's a takeaway from tonight's game that you want to apply in in game six as like an improvement? Because um, you know it was people were saying earlier like they the Hawks managed to come out in the second period very strong. They outscored you guys two to nothing. Is it just a question of keeping momentum going? Well, first you got to give the Hawks a lot of credit. Rick's a tremendous coach, yeah. and you know he has his team well prepared and, and they play hard for him. And if you're not ready to match that energy and their enthusiasm, uh, they're going to come and they're going to bite you in the ass. And you know, in the second period, we we laid back a little bit and they took the game to us. And, and good hockey, that's what good teams do. They take advantage of you. And you know, when you're not playing at your best level, they're gonna they're gonna take it to you. And that's what they did in the second period. So it wasn't so much what what they were doing. I think we just laid back a little bit too much. And but give the Hawks credit, they really turned it up and were aggressive on the four check. And finish their chances and, and really manage the puck really well. And, you know, that's how they ended up with a 2 1 lead going into the third. You mentioned that the defense has been so good, and, and I, I've talked to Marty about this too. Um, it's, it seems like the call up of Merrick Rippon has been uh, really successful for you guys because he's still able to play a good amount of minutes in the playoffs now he's starting to score goals which is something that he hasn't he didn't do in the regular season when he played as a call-up for you guys um even though it's the playoffs and you know the the intensity of and the physicality of games are ramped up he seems to be able to match that and it it really seems like he's uh um caught up with the pace of junior a yeah merrick's a tremendous hockey player and he's got a he's got a tremendous tremendously bright future ahead of him um, he's come in and, you know, he's more or less seamlessly transitioned from minor hockey into playing junior, which very rare that a, a kid his age can come in and have the, the impact that he that he has. Last year, obviously, we saw it with Greg Morales, and, and uh, we're, we're blessed the second year in a row to have somebody come up from, you know, the our midget program to step in and play some significant uh, minutes for us in the playoffs. And, and what it does, it allows other guys who, who play in log large minutes to, to get maybe that extra 30 or 40 seconds to, to catch their breath so 
you know, he's been a huge addition, and he's got a he's got a bright future ahead of him, no doubt about it. And you guys are going to get Jaron Burke back for the next game. How much of a boost is that going to be? I think we've really missed Burke the last two games. Uh, I I thought he's been a real force, especially down low. Uh, big body that that uh, you know we didn't have as many of tonight in the lineup. When and we notice when Berkey's missing, his physicality and his size really help us. And and hopefully uh, in the small barn in Hawkesbury on Friday night, you know we get a little little bit of boost with uh, having Jaron back in the lineup. But he's a huge part of what we're doing here. Johnny. Uh, well, I, I mean, it's not that you're scoring too many power play goals. You never stop that, but you were scoring the bulkier goals in the power play coming into this game. So w- was that a moment of a, 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 sort of an area of focus to, uh, I don't know how you could really focus on it, but you managed to pop two in even strength tonight, which is uh, which was, you know, something that you had kind of fallen by the wayside in the last couple of games. Yeah, ironically, the, the first round series with Kempfo was like a role reversal. Our, our special teams were not very good, and five on five we were very strong. And then coming into the Hawkesbury series, one of our goals was to to improve the power play. We switched some personnel around, ran a few more systems, and you know what? Obviously, you know it's been successful. And our, our PK, which was awful in the first round, has been even though they scored one tonight, has been much improved during the second round. And special teams can go a long way to to determining winners in playoff series. And hopefully, uh, Friday night, our, our special teams can can carry us again as they have all series. Yeah. Just final question. Um, we didn't see as many scrums late after post whistle scrums tonight. Was discipline one of the messages that you wanted to send to the team going into uh, tonight's game? Well, I, we always mention discipline in, in pregame and in our meetings, and and obviously it, it slipped away from us in the first four games a few times. Um, so we did mention it before the game, um, but yeah, there there weren't as many post whistle scrums. I guess you get into game five; it's such a pivotal game. Nobody wants to take a stupid penalty and. And you know, put their team down a man in, in a key situation. So, I think chalk it up to that. But I know both coaches are trying to preach a lot more discipline. Both, well, I'm sure Rick's mentioned it in his room, and, and I know we have in our room. So, I'm hoping that uh, the discipline play continues on Friday night. And good luck on Friday. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.